gonna start the hydroponic beto bucket system. We're gonna start with green beans. These are direct planted into the beto buckets. I found that works best for them. We have two lines coming from my one nutrient tank back here. This line over here is closer to the um, outside wall. That's where I'm gonna put the green beans because it's a shorter term crop and it's just easier to pick the green beans there. What is gonna go in this line here is gonna be my cucumbers because it's easier for me to harvest on both sides of the cucumber. I'm probably gonna do about 10 or so buckets, not too many of them. This is the time of year that mom always starts up the beto bucket system. That way we have green beans and all the fresh stuff here in the middle of winter. And uh, it's very bright today. We got a pretty good snow. They got probably three or four inches here, but it makes it super bright in the greenhouse. So she already power washed the beto buckets. and then she brought them over into the sink to get them sanitized and now she just has to finish cleaning up these elbows and those go into the bottom of the beto buckets and then into the drain pipe. I'm gonna take these and start laying them out in the holes there. So I put the buckets in. Now this we're gonna take down in a little bit to um, get the emitters in. I want to line them up to the drain holes because these do not recirculate. These are drained to waste. There's some stains in them. These buckets, this is my sixth year using these buckets. So if you take care of them and sanitize them and clean them, I mean, they may be a little bit stained, but they um, keep working. Okay, so next thing we have to do, we have to put the elbows in. They come, um, they're all the same pieces, but you put them together and then they go snap into the beto bucket. Here, I'll do one here so you can see me easier. So this helps the bucket drain properly so you don't get a bunch of water in the bottom of it. So you see it just snaps into the hole there and that goes into the drain and then it goes down to the bottom here to drain the water out. And you put the buckets opposite facing so you can get more plants in here because if they're all the same way, it's a little bit more difficult. This way each plant has a little bit more room to grow. These strings that you see are connected up to the bobbins up there, and then they hang on a wire. Uh, Mom will use these for these beta buckets because she plants pole beans. They're called Vortex, and they grow all the way up to that wire up there. For the nutrients for the um, beans here, for the Vortex, I use the lettuce nutrient tank. So I fill it up directly from the um, big tank here because the beans seem to do really well on the um, lettuce formula and the beans usually get about that long so usually over a foot long. The next step is putting in the vermiculite and the perlite. Most people just use perlite which I did use in the beginning but for me experimenting I put a little vermiculite layer in there because that holds a little bit more moisture but it's up to you what your preference is and just experiment and see what works for you for me and my greenhouse here. That's my uh, preference. So what I do is I cut the bags open and I just go through and dump them on in. So it's gonna be perlite, vermiculite, perlite in the buckets. flipped on this fan because that stuff gets dusty. Well now I am putting down the um, feeder line to get the nutrients in the beta buckets. And it's going to roll up for a little while. So it's going to take a minute to uh, get undone. These have all been sanitized. I am going to reuse them this year. Okay, so I'm going to tie this down to the uh, beta bucket so it doesn't move around. Since it's a short term crop, I'm just going to use twist ties. But when I do my tomatoes, I usually use um, zip ties so it stays better. And then I'll get this situated and then I put the emitters into the buckets. So what we're gonna do next, after I get this all hooked up, is we're gonna turn the pump on and get these nice and wet. So then when we put the, um, put the seeds in there, they'll start sprouting. Got them all in? Yep, I think so. These are some more seeds for the beto buckets that mom had started about five days ago. Uh, these are tomatoes and then some cucumbers. 
And she also has some broccoli and cauliflower started and those will go into the grow bag. So I'll make sure we get all that on film too for you. We let the pump run while we had a lunch break. So now mom is just taking the watering can and just giving it a little extra to make sure it's soaked all the way through. Okay, so I'm gonna plant these. I put about six of them in each bucket and just stick them in with my finger. And you can do more of these in the bucket because they don't take as much room because they grow up so tall. And like I said, they're a short-term crop. These will be ready um, in the summertime, it's about 70 days. In the wintertime, it's gonna be about 90 days. So you'll see that we're just directly planting the seeds into the buckets and uh, mom just found that they don't really need a growing medium. They'll germinate right into the vermiculite perlite mixture. Okay, we're all done. Yep, last thing I have to do is get the timer out for the pump. And like in the summertime, you have to adjust for the weather. So right now I'm going to start off with 40 minutes off and 40 seconds on. And once the plants get going, I'll pay attention to them. And they'll let me know if they need more water or less water. And like in the summertime when it's really sunny out, of course, they're going to need more. And since we put more than um, one or two plants in each fatal bucket, I'm going to rearrange my bobbins to make sure there's enough bobbins coming down for each plant. Because each one of the um, beans is going to climb up on this um, string and go all the way up to the top, like Devin said. And sometimes they even throw us over and all the beans will start hanging down. And it's pretty cool to see. So you'll see an update in a few weeks when they start popping out. And then about another month, they should be about this tall. Yep. All right, I'm going to grab a couple things. Okay, there's spinach and kale over there. Cook yourself. Thank you. Okay. Baby kale. I would love some. Got my goodie bags again. So how old are these ones? Um, I seeded these uh, October 11th. Okay. So, so like a month and a half? Yep. Because I'm kind of worried about my desktop NFT system. They're really spindly. Uh, you probably need to lower down the light. Okay. Yep. I'll give you guys an update on the desktop system here in a bit. I want to check this before we go up real quick. Yeah. So I got my A and B nutrient tank. So I just look in there, make sure they're about the same going down. You want to make sure the pumps are pumping the same amount in. Then I check my um, controller and it looks like my pH and everything in it where it's supposed to be, water temperature 62. So we're good there. So I keep this covered up so the moisture doesn't go on my controller and corrode any of the um, connections here. So I have a nice piece of um, uh, vinyl. And then here are all the controllers. And then here's my um, pH adjust. So I check that out, make sure there's some pH in there. And then I go and check my nutrient tank and I do have a little bit of algae in it. And so I make sure everything's going good in the nutrient tank. So the endive is getting really big? Yes. And I have to harvest it Tuesday, so I think it's going to be perfect. See how the insides are getting nice and tender in there? Yeah. And it's nice and white like it's supposed to be. Awesome. I'm glad it turned out good. Yeah. Yeah, first time I'm going to have it for the CSA program this year, so hopefully everybody likes it. But um, it has a really nice flavor to it. It's a little bit bitter, but that's what endive is, is a little bitter. But it's got a nice crunch to it. Before we head home, I promise the boys... Here's the desktop NFT system. Um, it's been about three weeks and I've done two tank changes so far. We had a bad storm about a week ago that knocked out power for a day, so that didn't really help these guys, but I'm gonna keep adjusting the light and maybe add some light too to see if that helps. Um, I'm still excited about this, so I'll keep you guys updated. And today mom recommended that maybe I should try some uh, spring mix, so we'll see how that goes. We put the kids to bed, and Bobby's out here working on a vintage snowmobile. I think it's a 1981 John Deere 340. My dad bought it brand new. It's sat for probably 15 years. 
Maybe. I used to ride it when I was a kid with Dad. Or Dad used to drive me around on it. Well, Bobby's gonna keep working on that for a little bit, but I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you are into like smaller scale hydroponics, be sure to check out Crop King's website because they do have a um, small betel bucket system. I think it's 10 buckets or so. I'll put the link in the description for you. And uh, stay tuned because we are going to do the tomatoes and the cucumbers into the betel buckets and then the grow bags with the broccoli. So be sure to subscribe and thank you for watching.